Hello, grade eight. So we are continuing with the second part of the chapter, sound waves. Uh, in this week's lecture, you guys will be able to identify the characteristics of a sound wave and you'll be able to state the law of reflection of a sound wave. All right, so we know from before that sound waves are mechanical waves and mechanical waves, they have characteristics like the period, amplitude, frequency, wavelength and wave speed. Yes, sound waves do have these characteristics, but uh, they also have other characteristics which are related to those characteristics. Let's see. Uh, we're going to talk about three of those. The first one is the pitch. The pitch, it is simply, you know, a characteristic of sound waves that depends on its frequency. So basically, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, the lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. All right. The pitch allows us to determine whether a sound is sharp, which is of high pitch, of a high pitch, or the sound is thick, which is of a low pitch. Now click on this so that we can hear this. All right, so we said the first characteristic of a sound wave is the pitch. And the pitch, it depends on the frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. The lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. A high pitch sound is called sharp. A low pitch sound is called thick. Okay, so let's see that. I'm go I will be changing the frequency and you guys will hear uh, if the frequency gets higher. You will hear a sharp sound okay and you can see from this uh you know wave right here that it has a high frequency and once the frequency is lower where you guys can see that the number of cycles is getting uh less and less this means that the frequency is low and the sound is thick sharp thick another characteristic is the volume Okay, so the volume or loudness of a sound, it depends on its amplitude. So the bigger the amplitude, the louder the sound is. The smaller the amplitude, the quieter the sound is. Okay, so it depends on the amplitude. The volume allows us to determine whether a sound is loud, which is of a high big amplitude or the sound is simply quiet because the amplitude is small again let's click on the simulation and see how you know how the loudness or the volume how does it depend on the amplitude moving on to the second characteristic which is the volume we said that the the volume depends on the amplitude the higher the bigger the amplitude the bigger the volume the smaller the amplitude the smaller the volume this is the volume right here so uh you know when the volume is high we call it we call the sound loud and then if it's low we call it quiet okay so i will be setting the frequency on a value on a random value just like that it doesn't matter you can see the amplitude right here so once the volume is increasing or once the amplitude is increasing basically the volume is increasing okay because and this is what we call a loud volume now if we if the amplitude decreased then the volume will decrease and this is what we call a quiet sound and the third characteristic is the timbre the timbre basically says that if i have two musical instruments they both are emitting sound waves okay that have the same frequency you guys can see the same frequency and the same amplitude but yet one sound is different than the other okay uh, this is a guitar. This is a sitar. If you guys hear their sounds, uh, they will be different, but they are playing with the same frequency and the same volume. What does that mean? This difference is due to the tone quality. There is something called a tone quality 
or a timbre of the sound. Okay, so once you have two different musical instruments that emit uh, different sounds, but both sounds have the same frequency and same volume, you say that they have different timbre. Okay, so the timbre of the sound is different. Moving on to the reflection of sound. When you say reflection of sound, the first thing that must come to your mind is the echo that you hear in an empty room. I'm sure you've entered an empty room before or even in the bathroom when you speak or when you sing, you will hear your voice getting repeated again. And especially if you are in like a big hall, you will hear your voice repeated again and again and again. Why is that? Because basically sound is a wave that it travels. You can see it's traveling. And once it hits, once it hits an obstacle, which can be a wall or any obstacle, it will be reflected, it will go back. And this is why you will be, e be able to hear it again. So yeah, this is how we hear our voices again and again. This is what echo means. So echo is a phenomenon of reflection of sound when it strikes an obstacle. It is used to determine the distance between the source of the sound and the obstacle. What do we mean by that? How it is used to determine, how can I know the distance between this person and this wall based on the echo? Let's find out in the next slide. But before we do that, you can see this is the distance that traveled by the sound wave for the sound wave to go to the wall and then when it hits the wall to get back to the person. Now, this is what we call echo. All right, so to give an example of usage of this echo phenomenon is uh, the sonar. The sonar is basically sound navigating and ranging. Okay, what is that exactly? It is basically used by ships. Uh, there is a device that is right here, used by ships, where this device uh, it sends sound waves in the material medium, which is water, okay, until these sound waves hit an obstacle. It could be a wrecked, uh, they, they might be looking for a wrecked ship or, I don't know, any obstacle, okay? So when it hits that obstacle, then the sound waves will get reflected. So they will get reflected and they will go back to the you know, sound emitter. Okay, so yeah, this is the, uh, this is how, you know, sound waves travel when they hit an obstacle. So they go this way, and when they hit an obstacle, they will go back the other way. Now, the thing is with this sonar is that it doesn't send an audible sound. It actually sends an ultrasound, which basically we cannot hear. So it sends an ultrasound uh, in the water, and when it hits an obstacle, it will get reflected back to the ship. And this is how they find the depth of the ocean. Uh, let's see how that works. So we said uh, that the sound waves travel this way, and then it goes back like this. So there is a distance that is traveled by this wave. We're gonna call it capital D. Capital D is the distance covered by the sound in an echo. All right. T is the time separating the emission of the sound and the receiving and receiving the reflected one. So the time by which the sound wave, you know, went to the bottom of the ocean and you know came back to the uh, to the sound emitter. So this is the time separating the emission and the receiving of the sound wave. And V is the speed of the sound in the medium. So in this case, it is the speed of the sound in seawater. Great, so I have all that. And if you guys remember the triangle, which uh, looks like that, you will have that V equals distance over time. And if I wanna find the distance traveled by the sound wave, it will be D equals V times T. Okay, but this is not the actual distance that I'm looking for, because if you look at this distance, capital D, it is basically, you know, 
it's the depth of the ocean but times two right because basically the sound wave you know uh it travels this way and then it goes back so it's traveling two distances let's call that a small d so a capital d is equal to two small d's so if i want to find the depth of the ocean which is the small d it would be the capital d over two so this is the distance between the source of sound and the obstacle and this is the distance that i am usually looking for and that's it we're done with this chapter i hope you guys found it interesting i will see you on the live session study well take care and bye bye